Thank you. Please be seated. If I could have Leah Bowlby and Lucas Kuchar to the stage, please, to do the welcome and the Pledge of Allegiance. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the class of 2021's graduation ceremony. First, I would like to say thank you to everyone who is able to be in attendance today, as I know that it is greatly appreciated by the class. I invite you to sit back, laugh, cry, and help us celebrate the achievements of all of the graduating students, as I could not be prouder of my class and the things that they have achieved over the years. I ask everyone to please make sure that your cellular devices are silenced. However, feel free to take as many pictures and videos as you want. Again, I thank you all for your attendance today as we celebrate the students in the class of 2021. Now, Lucas Kuchar is going to pray for us, or do the Pledge of Allegiance, my bad. Do well. <laughs> Lord help us, amen. If you would please stand and face the flag. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Coach David Hughes graduated from Kansas State University in the spring of 1980, and that summer accepted a position as one of the 7th through 12th grade social studies teachers here at South Haven. In August of that year, Mr. Hughes and his wife Kelly moved to South Haven and began a 34-year relationship with this community. In his first year at South Haven, he also coached junior high football, basketball, and track, along with coaching high school football, basketball, and track. He also served as a senior sponsor that year. The Hughes raised three children, all graduating from South Haven, Megan, the class of 1999, Rachel, class of 2002, and Kellen, the class of 2005. Megan and Ike live in Manhattan with their kids Beatrice, six, and Willa, three. Megan is a stay-at-home mom and is a community activist within Manhattan. Prior to COVID, she had a yoga studio. Rachel and Leon also live in Manhattan with their kids Kennedy, nine, and Owen, five. Rachel is an independent hairstylist at Urbanity Salon in Manhattan. Kellen and Megan live in Houston with their daughter, Nora, three. Kellen is the Executive Rehabilitation Director for nine locations of Kidred Hospitals in Texas. Kelly and David moved to Clay Center, Kansas in 2014 to be closer to their kids and grandkids. Both David and Kelly now work for Wakefield Public Schools. Kelly is a school counselor and David is a part-time social studies teacher, head high school girls basketball coach, and head track coach. In the summer of 2021, David will once again be employed by Van Zant Farms as harvest coordinator for the 32nd year. Please welcome Mr. David Hughes. Thank you, Mr. LeVan, Superintendent Burgess, and the school board, and especially the South Haven Cardinal Class of 2021 for inviting me to speak today. It is a privilege and honor to do so. I first want to tell you why my wife Kelly's not with me today. As in my intro, you know, we left in 2014 to be closer to our family. And our oldest grandchild, Kennedy, has a dance recital this afternoon. And Kelly, better known as Gigi now, felt she needed to be there for her. And I'm sure all you grandmas know what I mean. She wanted me to congratulate you kids and wish you the best for your future. When I got the call asked me to speak today, I was really surprised and unsure uh, what I could speak about. You know, the more I worried and fretted about it, the more I kept thinking about our life here. This, this community and the relationships we developed. It's been an emotional couple of weeks for this old man. And Brianna Stroman, she sent me the school roster, and I was looking at it, and you know, most of these seniors and I have some sort of connection. So that's what I'm gonna focus on, is this connection. You know, my first graduating class was right here in this gym in 1981. If my math's correct, which, uh, that was 40 years ago. And, you know, it's hard to believe that. Sue Jean was sitting there the last time I remember. So 
But, you know, she's been here. I, I asked her how long, and she didn't want to tell me. Okay. Um, you know, and there were others here as well, I know, that, uh, you know, some of them were playing in the band, singing in the choir, or just here supporting these kids. One of those 1981 graduates, Jennifer Quillen's niece, Sydney Bacon, is among this 2021 class. Like her parents, I know Sydney is an outstanding athlete. Last summer, I ran into her and her brother Garrett at Walmart. We had a really good conversation, a nice long conversation, and it proved she has the bacon gift of gab. <laughs> there are three sets of great grandparents in this group that I had a connection with by helping with farm work John and Mary Thur, Grace's great grandparents, Merle and Joanne Walter, Madison Smith's great grandparents, Art and Ruth Van Zant, Slate Van Zant's great grandparents. You know, I enjoyed the work. Uh, but I've got to tell you, the best part of that connection was sitting at that kitchen table, eating great-grandma's cooking. It was good. You know, there is one other great-grandparent that I had a, uh, and have a connection with, and that's Eldon Gracie, is who is represented here today by Garrett Howe. You know, I never worked for Eldon, but a couple years ago, I nominated him for the Kansas State football fan of the game during their Veterans Weekend. And he was honored for his service as a World War II veteran. When his award was given, which is displayed on the Jumbotron, both the K-State players and the West Virginia players removed their helmets, gave him a standing ovation, along with the uh, entire stadium. It was really an emotional time for Eldon. And for those of you know, who know Eldon, it couldn't have happened to a better person. I can't tell you what he said to me when he came over. It's not appropriate at this time. So I'm going to talk, maybe, uh, you know, about some other kids that, you know, that connection. Lucas Kuchar. Yeah, he showed. I said, I've heard he's quite a character. And, and imagine that, knowing he's dad. Since we've, uh, since we moved, we've been camping and boating several times over the past years. Uh, a couple years with Jessica Brown and her family, along with uh, others. Last summer, her family and Don Miner's family came to our home and spent the evening enjoying a great fish fry and a good time reminiscing. You know, I've gotten to know that soft smile and quiet demeanor Jessica has. Then there's Sydney Holman. My earliest memory of her was at her great-grandparents, Henry and Deb's local business, the State Line Tavern. <laughs> she wasn't very old, but standing on a chair... In order for her to play darts, she would dominate anyone trying to challenge her. There was no way I was going to try to challenge her. I'd lost enough quarters playing Henry and pinball. Cooper and Slate were my football managers through their fourth and fifth grade years, being at every practice, making every bus trip, and doing all that was asked of them. But my most vivid memories of those two were seeing them out on the football field, playing football, uh, while we were practicing or just setting up in the bleachers doing whatever grade school boys do. I did get the opportunity this year to watch them uh, and the team play football this past season. was impressed with the heart they all played with. I kept thinking that Cooper and Slate were really my last direct link to the football program. And then, hey, Reese is still there. And then there are other sports teams here that, you know, were uh, my kids – Melinda, Jenny, Cody, Diana, Emily, and James. Uh, you know, and some of the teachers uh, that were my uh, former students, Callie and Ciara. And speaking of athletics, I'd like to congratulate Coach Weber and his varsity boys basketball team for making it into the state tournament. It only took me 21 years to do that. <laughs> I do have a challenge for this class. For those I've already mentioned, as well as Josiah, Christian, Alex, Leah, Davin, Hunter, and Americus. As a social studies teacher, a big emphasis in our curriculum is the concept of civic engagement, which means for us as educators uh, to, get, to educate kids to become involved in active volunteers in their communities. Please do this. You know, believe me, it is what, makes, it is what this community is already about and has been for a long time. So... Civic engagement, what's this look like? 
these guys right here, you know, uh, they're essential for this school to function. Sue Jean, you know, she volunteers. You know, she's essential for this event. And many other things, I'm sure, that happen at the school. You know, the volunteer fire department to, bright, to provide protection and safety. The fair board makes it possible for the greatest small fair in the state, maybe in the entire nation, to happen. The South Haven pork producers who raise money and support and support our FFA and 4-H kids. Membership within your local churches, the coaches for the recreation ball teams, and serving on the city council. So in other words, you are there for other people. You know, about this school, there are two things that really stand out. Uh, first is the FFA program. I think Jim Quillen, you know, got it restarted back in the 1970s. Then James Ryan took it to another level. And when he retired, I felt bad for whoever took that program over. But I can honestly say Seth Stroman has succeeded in keeping it a viable part of our school and community. The other thing, and I can't believe I'm actually saying this, is the senior trip. It's a big responsibility for a teacher to take kids nowadays on a trip of this magnitude. But it has been such an important part of this school. Uh, the community members keep stepping up and help make it happen. You know, I was on a lot of senior trips. And I enjoyed most of them, but not like the last one I was on. The class, I'd already left. The class of 2015 asked me to go. So, all right, I'll go. Well, I hop on the bus, and there's Brett Holman and Mike McConnell. We were the biggest problems. <laughs> In closing, I want to thank this community for supporting me and my family. By help, help, helping Kelly and I raise responsible kids. This was and still is a special place. Each of my kids have said and will tell you there's nowhere else they could ever imagine growing up. It is our hometown. You guys may not realize, but someday it's, you will really understand what they're saying. So congratulations to you guys. Good luck and make us all proud. If uh, Miss Jessica Brown could come to the stage to deliver the salutatory address. Hello, and welcome to the South Havens Class of 2021 graduation ceremony. It is such an honor to speak before you all and attempt to encompass the last 15 years into one speech. For the ones who don't know me, my name is Jessica and I've lived in South Haven my whole life. I've attended school here since preschool and I've walked these hallways for the last 15 years. When Mr. LeVan informed me that I needed to write this speech, I immediately had no idea where to go with it. So instead of stressing about it, I started writing it that night. I started this essay like I would any other. I began by taking a five hour nap, ate a family sized bag of chips, drank two Red Bulls, then opened my browser. Though, there are so many things that come to mind when I think about my class and the years spent here. Like the time in freshman year when our sub didn't show up, so we created a ring and watched two of our classmates fight in the middle. <laughs> when Madison made us all listen to big time Rush songs because she was obsessed with them. Or when we all watched Cooch fall over a bush while completing an Ag Olympics course. <laughs> There's one thing everyone in this school can agree on, and that's when you enter a room with my class, it is going to be entertaining. Our conversations have scarred many teachers and faculty that unfortunately overheard what was being said. And I will admit, some even disturbed me too. At least one of us would ask Cooch what he did over the weekend, and his answers always included something about his girlfriend or work. And if you don't know where Cooch works, he works at a funeral home. You can only imagine what comes out of his mouth. <laughs> Most of the good times I can remember revolve around Cooch. Well, at state FFA convention a few years ago, we were staying on a cabin on Milford Lake. Cooch, me, and a few other kids decided to walk down to the water to check it out. While we were walking along the shoreline, a boat went by which created wakes that eventually reached us. As they were hitting the shoreline, Cooch proceeds to say, you guys, we need to get back up to the cabin, the tide is coming in. <laughs> 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 
The funny thing is, we still quote this today, just like many other things he has said, like, I'm so sick of tired of you. I try to be humble, but it's so hard, and I just can't take a bad picture. <laughs> there are many more quotes, but they are too inappropriate to be said as I'm standing here before all of our family and friends. <laughs> if you haven't heard the news, Cooch is planning to run for president. And yes, we have already created shirts for his campaign. So please vote Cooch for president in 2040. For those who don't know the class of 2021, I will briefly give you an overview of a few people in my class. Now, my class does not know I did this, but I went to a few of your Twitter accounts and got some of the most meaningful quotes off of them. Here are some of the class of 2021's wisest words. Christian tweeted, you ever be eating a hot tamale and get the gummy stuck in your teeth and just let it sit in your mouth a while? <laughs> Madison retweeted, I would like to thank Jesus for blessing me beyond belief. I have a weird shaped body, but other than that, I'm perfect. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Sydney Bacon tweeted a quote from Grace. You'll never catch me cheating because it's a miracle if I can get one man. <laughs> I think I can speak for all of us when I say we have a great sense of humor. Some of our teachers appreciated this characteristic more than others. During our government class, Mr. A was demonstrating how to efficiently budget. He chose Hunter to use as an example where he proceeded to ask where he is going to live, where he is going to work, and how he is going to get to work. Hunter's answers included that he is going to room with one of his buddies, work at McDonald's, drive a car, and when asked how he was going to get this car, he answered he was going to steal it to save money. <laughs> During March in economics, Mr. A was teaching us about buying a house and all the costs associated with it. He asked our class where he wanted to live, and at least three of us said a van because you don't have to pay property tax. We always seem to make the best out of every situation. We also had a common theme of focusing on things that had nothing to do with the class itself, like in Mr. Winder's class. He always started off the day with daily news articles and usually had a lesson planned for the rest of the day. Well, long story short, we would barely get through the daily news articles. And I'm not just talking about every once in a while, I mean every single day. Every conversation always branched into another, and before we knew it, we'd be talking about how many light years you'd have to travel to be in the future. None of these memories would have been what they are without my classmates. I've seen you all every day for the last 15 years of my life. The good and the bad, the fun times and the embarrassing moments, and all the times we got in trouble. There were so, so many. I can remember when our class quote got denied for eighth grade promotion because we wanted it to be, they hate us because they ain't us. And if I remember correctly, I think we tried to get it to be our quote for this too, and they still didn't let us do it. I know what you're thinking, they really do suck every single ounce of enjoyment out of our lives these days. This is such a huge change in all of our lives, and I know it can be terrifying. But in times of doubt, go back to what made you who you are today. Like how Madison made us all listen to Big Time Rush. In the song, Big Time Rush, it states, Go and make your luck with the life you choose. If you want it all, lay it on the line. It's the only life you got, so you got to live it big time. I'm not going to stand here and preach about some wishful advice. We all know we are going places. The one thing I do want to speak on is the fact that sometimes it doesn't work out. Life throws curveballs at the most unexpected times, and sometimes you can't do anything about it. I know for a fact we will all experience hard days. My mom once told me it's not about what happens to you, it's about how you choose to react to it. Life is going to happen. So instead of getting down because something didn't work out, wipe your tears and pick yourself back up. Because in reality, that bad situation is usually the start of something better in the long run. Things may se seem difficult while in the midst, but you learn how to adapt and overcome as time goes on. What is meant to be will be, and you will end up where you are destined no matter what. I want to give the biggest thanks to our parents. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you all. I can remember when we were on this very stage graduating kindergarten. The things that happened in those 12 years between then and now are not clear in my mind, but we all somehow made it here. Next, I would like to thank all of my classmates. I know it is overwhelming because today means so much more than just getting this diploma. This is the last day we walk through these hallways as students, the last time we get to make memories, memories in this school with all of us together, and most importantly, the last day we have to put up with all the unnecessary rules we had to abide by for the last four years. <laughs> While you are walking across this stage for the very last time, acknowledge your hard work and sacrifices to get here. Because of our hard work and dedication, I can proudly say we are going down in history as the most legendary, funny, good-looking, intelligent, talented, successful, superior class to graduate from South Haven schools. <laughs> Lastly, I would like to thank the community of South Haven for always supporting us in everything we do. You guys have always been there for every sporting event, fundraiser, or any other school activity that was hosted, and always made it known that you are here to support us. 
Without you all, we wouldn't be able to do a lot of things like our senior trip. We financially suffered without some major fundraisers for our senior trip, and because of you guys, we still get to go. We will be departing next week, and I can assure everyone the class of 2021 will party like there's no tomorrow. But for today, we will celebrate the long-awaited accomplishment we have all been working so hard for. It's difficult for me to comprehend that this chapter in our lives is, is coming to an end and we will all go our separate ways after today. I think Gwen Stefani said it best in one of her songs when she stated that this stuff really is bananas. Thank you. This class is very bright. They have earned a lot of scholarships this year. So uh, Mrs. Brianna Stroman is going to come up and talk about those a little bit. All right. Sydney Bacon, Royal Purple Scholarship from Kansas State University, $14,000. Kansas All-Star Scholars Scholarship, $5,000. Canocla Scholarship, $1,000. Freshman Wildcat Grant, $1,000. Wheatland Lodge Scholarship, $550. Sumner Cali Electric Cooperative Scholarship, $500. This is a lot, $500. James Ryan Scholarship, $500. Robert and, Robert and Dorothy Dvorak Memorial Scholarship, $500. South Haven Teachers Association Scholarship, $500. Leah Bowlby, Long Island University, Full Tuition Presidential Scholarship, $38,000. <laughs> Kansas All-Star Scholars, $1,000. Wheatland Electric Cooperative Scholarship, $1,000. Scholarship provided from an anonymous donor in honor of Joy Turek, $500. American Red Cross Scholarship, $250. Jessica Brown. Kansas All-Star Scholar Scholarship, $2,000. Wheatland Lodge Scholarship, $550. James Ryan Scholarship, $500. South Haven Teachers Association Scholarship, $500. Christian Burden, Kansas All-Star Scholar Scholarship, $1,000. First Christian Church Scholarship, $1,000. Alex Carruthers, Kansas All-Star Scholar Scholarship, $1,000. Scholarship provided from an anonymous donor in honor of Angela Harding, $500. Wichita State University Scholarship, $500. Sydney Hallman, why are you crying? <laughs> this is scholarship, these are good. <laughs> Sydney Hallman, Kansas All-Star Scholarship, scholarship. Kansas All-Star Scholar Scholarship, $1,000. James Ryan Scholarship, $500. Community Church of South Haven Scholarship, $350. Pageant Scholarship for Books and Tuition from Cali County Community College. Garrett Howell, Kansas All-Star Scholar Scholarship, $1,000. Lucas Kuchar, Kansas All-Star Scholar Scholarship, $1,000. Can Oakland Scholarship, $1,000. Wheatland Lodge Scholarship, $550. James Ryan Scholarship, $500. Sumner Cali Electric Cooperative Scholarship, $500. Angela Harding Memorial Scholarship, $500. Blackwell Elks Lodge Scholarship, $500. South Haven Teachers Association Scholarship, $500. VFW Voice of Democracy Scholarship, $100. Madison Smith, Kansas All-Star Scholar Scholarship, $1,000. Wheatland Electric Cooperative Scholarship, $1,000. Community Church of South Haven Scholarship, $350. Walter Family Scholarship, $250. And a scholarship from the nest with an undetermined amount. Grace Thewer, Kansas All-Star Scholar Scholarship, $1,000. Wheatland Lodge Scholarship, $550. Joy Turek Memorial Scholarship, $500. James Ryan Scholarship, $500. Sumner Cali Electric Cooperative Scholarship, $500. And the Nest Scholarship with an undetermined amount. Slate Van Zandt, Prairie Land Technician Scholarship, $8,000. Hutchinson Community College Agronomy Judging Team Scholarship, $1,500. 
Kansas All-Star Scholar Scholarship, $1,000. Cooper Wolf, Friends University Athletics and Academic Scholarship, $18,500. and the Kansas All-Star Scholar Scholarship, $1,000. This time I'd like to invite Ms. Sydney Bacon to the stage to give the valedictory address. Good afternoon and welcome to the South Haven Class of 2021 graduation. I would like to take the time to thank everyone for coming to watch us complete this major milestone. I'm sure many of you can remember whenever you were the one sitting at the front of the gym with sweaty palms and shaky hands, getting ready to throw your caps in the air and walk out as an official high school graduate. Now, I'm usually not one for admitting when I'm wrong, but I have to say everyone who said it goes by fast was definitely right. It's one of those things that you don't really understand or appreciate until it's gone. So underclassmen, I'm here to tell you, even though you probably won't listen, it goes by fast. The countdown for graduation was all fun and games until about the last month. Everything started to hit me. There would be no more laughing until my stomach hurt in anatomy, no more singing International Harvester in the library with Leah, and no more time on the basketball court with Macy. I found myself, as Scotty McCreer would say, just wanting five more minutes. It's hard to imagine a life without my classmates. After all, I've been going to school with most of them for the past 13 years. We've grown up together, and I'll be, and I'll be forever thankful for all the good times. If you know our class at all, you know that we're usually not one to just be quiet and follow the rules. Our parents and future teachers should have known that we would be a handful ever since kindergarten when we all decided, with the exception of Leah, that it would be a fantastic idea to hide under our desk after Miss Curl left the room and surprise her when she got back. Sounds like a perfect plan, right? Wrong. She did not appreciate our, our surprise as we anticipated. Everyone, except Leah, got a sticker taken off their chart. And as a kindergartner, that was pretty devastating. Looking back, it makes sense that Leah opted out of our great idea that day because she knew that nothing good would happen. Now, as seniors, she still has that knack for great leadership, which is why we elected her as our class president. We may not always listen to her advice, but it usually turns out that we should have. I don't know about everyone else, but some days I find myself wishing for just five more minutes as a kindergartner where my biggest concern were how many stars were on my chart. I personally doubt that I had many stars, even though I was such an angel. But that, way, but that made losing one so much more painful because the chances of me getting it back were slim. Of course, we all changed as we got older, but one thing stayed the same, our class's ability to push the limits. Each member of our class has that drive to achieve, and that is something that makes me proud to be a part of the class of 2021. Whether that be in the classroom, on the basketball court, or at an FFA competition, we wanted to push ourselves to become better. I mean, how many 1A schools can say they have someone going to play D2 basketball next year? That accomplishment doesn't come short of a lot of hard work and dedication. But our class list of accomplishments isn't just limited to athletics. We have Lucas, who was a South Central District FFA officer last year and part of the National FFA Choir for two years. That accomplishment takes someone with great passion and drive. Not to mention Leah graduating college before high school. College, gradu college graduation at Cali this morning and high school graduation this afternoon. That's pretty impressive. Our class carries this drive outside of the school walls as well. Garrett, Alex, and Madison have all had jobs for most of our high school career and have balanced school and work successfully. Well, Garrett, man Garrett managed the school that he actually showed up for pretty well at least. I bet some of Garrett's teachers are wishing that he would have been in class for just five more minutes. One of the best things about growing up in a middle of nowhere town in the Midwest is the opportunity for involvement. I don't know much about big schools, but I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be involved in just about every single extracurricular activity if I hadn't attended school in South Haven. These extracurriculars have become a major part of who I am. 
I can't imagine my high school experience without FFA trips, fundraisers for a different club every weekend, and countless hours spent with my teammates. These are memories that I will cherish forever. It would take me an eternity to share every memory I have made over the years, so I chose a few of my favorites to share with you today. Basketball practice was usually pretty serious, but some of my favorite basket, but some of my favorite practices of the year were whenever Mr. and Mrs. Heater would loosen up on the defense practice for a little bit and scrimmage with us. I know he doesn't look like he would be able to keep up with us, but let me be the first to tell you, that man still got game. <laughs> I know this because he would constantly remind me. He would always say, you can't guard me. And he was right, because I was usually laughing too hard. I cannot possibly tell funny memories from high school without mentioning Stroman. We are weirdly similar, and he always knew how to make me laugh. FFA trips were always interesting, to say the least. There's one in particular that still makes me smile every time I think about it. We were on our way to Manhattan for state FFA contest freshman year, and Stroman would turn the heat all the way up in the suburban and then proceed to lock all the windows. As you can imagine, things got chaotic quickly. I thought that trick was so funny that as a senior, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to do the same to some of my favorite underclassmen on our way back from a contest in Hutch. It didn't take long for them to realize what was going on, but I couldn't hear them complain about the heat because Stroman and I were too busy laughing. Don't tell Stroman this, but whenever I walked out of his class for the last time, I may or may not have shed a tear when I was walking down the hallway. These are a few of the memories that keep me wishing for just five more minutes. I wouldn't be where I am today without my family and best friends. Rachel, Macy, Leah, and I have some pretty, pretty great memories, and I truly don't know where I would be without them. I know we will all stay connected as we go our separate ways, but I'm grateful that I get the chance to call them my childhood best friends. My family is truly the best support system I could ask for. I always knew that when I looked up in the stands at sporting events that there would be at least one, but more likely a whole section of the stands taken up by my family. I was blessed with the best parents and siblings a girl could ask for. My parents never failed to support me in whatever I chose to do, and I can confidently say that they are the reason I am standing here today. My brothers made me resilient from a young age. After all, I had to be tough growing up with two older brothers because I never knew when a football or a rock maybe flying through the air, heading directly for my head. We didn't fight all the time, though. I clearly remember a time Zach, Garrett, Rustin, and I broke my mom's bench. We knew we were toast, but instead of just fessing up, we thought it would be a great idea to hide the bench and then run. She would never notice that her bench and her kids were missing, right? I'm still not sure to this day how we thought we'd be able to survive in the pasture on our own, or that she wouldn't find out that we were the ones that broke her bench. Even though we got caught that day, I wouldn't change that memory for the world. That's the kind of stuff we're reminisce on when we're old and decrepit and wish that we had just five more minutes to sing, to, to share every single story. As I wrap up this speech, I wanna take the time to thank my teachers, administrators, coaches, community members, and everyone else that makes South Haven a great place to grow up. I will be able to take this next step in my life confidently, thank to, thanks to you all. I wish my classmates the best of luck in their future endeavors, and I can't wait to see the great things you accomplish via the Facebook feed. No matter what we do, we will always find ourselves wishing for five more minutes. So make the best of every minute you have. Now, let's go throw our caps in the air and make the best of the last moments we will spend together as the class of 2021. Thank you. And now to present the senior and staff above and beyond awards is board president, Mr. Steve Nicholson. <clears throat> For our senior above and beyond award, there are many words that can be used to describe this year's senior above and, above and beyond winner. Talented, creative, leader. But I think the one that might fit best is focused. This young lady has had her sights set on her educational goals for several years now. She took high school classes during her eighth grade year. She spent her freshman and sophomore years completing the bulk of her high school requirements. Her junior and senior years have been spent primarily taking college classes. 
She is liked and respected by her teachers and her classmates, recognized her leadership by electing her class president. Earlier today, she graduated from Cali Community College with her associate's degree. It is my pleasure to present this year's Senior Above and Beyond Award to Leah Bowlby. Now for our staff above and beyond award. In every school, there is that one person whose students feel the most comfortable talking to when they have a problem. <clears throat> At South Haven, that person is Brianna Stroman. <clears throat> Mrs. Stroman's dedication to her job and the students of South Haven is exceptional. It doesn't matter if the student is in kindergarten or a senior, she can relate to them on a personal level and help them work through any problem. Sometimes that involves telling students things they don't necessarily want to hear. But students know that she always has their best interest at heart. Mrs. Stroman also plays a key role as part of the district leadership team. And she was instrumental in restructuring seminar and into Cardinal time in order to make that time more valuable to the students of South Haven. It is my pleasure to present this year's Staff Above and Beyond Award to Brianna Stroman. At this time, we'll have a performance by the South Haven Choir Ensemble under the direction of Mrs. Kristen Chisholm. And they will be performing Oceans and Stars, written by Amy Vernon, and accompanist is Sue Harris. If I get the choir to come to the front, please.
Thank you, choir, and Mrs. Chisholm. If I could get the graduates, if they would please stand and move to the stage at this time. Parents, friends, and relatives, the following students have met the requirements set forth by the State Board of Education and the USD 509 Board of Education and are duly qualified to graduate from South Haven High School. Sydney Faye Bacon. Leah Rose Bowlby. <laughs> Josiah Ethan Bright. Jessica Ann Brown. <laughs> Christian Lee Burden. Alexandria Elaine Carruthers. <laughs> Davin Joseph Gould. Sydney Ann Hallman. Garrett Zeke Howell. <laughs> Lucas. 
Lucas Paul Kuchar. Hunter Dane Meyer. <laughs> Americus Marie Porner. Madison Don Smith. <laughs> Grace Adele Thurer. Slate Wayne Van Zant. <laughs> Cooper Ray Wolf. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and privilege to present to you the South Haven High School Class of 2021.
Ladies and gentlemen, the class will return momentarily. They will be up here if you'd like to come up and offer your congratulations and well wishes. Thank you.